Okay, hey, what's going on, guys? It's Jason Park with the Hypertube Podcast, and I have a special guest. He goes by the name as Niall Casting. Niall Casting, what's up, man? Jason, how are you? I am doing absolutely fantastic. What about yourself? I'm fantastic. I'm also fantastic. Thank you very much for having me on the pod. Yeah, no worries, man. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself, man. You're a screenwriter. You're living in LA. How did you come from Ireland to being a screenwriter in LA, and then you know, dive into you you writing for the History Channel and 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 just just get nasty with it. Um, well, uh, long story, you know, we're, that's why, like, people are, like, when people ask, like, what's the best way to break into the film industry, like, there's, no one has the same story. So I, I worked in finance in Ireland for, like, 10 years, wasn't a big reader, wasn't a big writer, but always loved movies, movies were, like, my thing, and, uh, one day, I, like, I was, I, would, I don't know, I don't know if you call it the depression, or, like, I was just, like, fucking really sad, and, uh, one day, I was just, like, I've had enough, like, no one wants to work in a bank as a kid, always want to work in movies and i had no experience had no connections like it's not like my uncle is is involved in movies or film right so i was like 31 32 and i always sold myself short i always said to myself like too old or i made all these excuses so then one day i was just like i'm sick and tired of listening to myself complain and, and like you know bl- i used to blame other people the only person who was at fault was me and one day i was just like okay i'm gonna make a plan wrote down what i need to do saved up some money and then I went to my boss like three months three months before I left and I was just like I'm, I'm quitting and he's like tell me what what's the matter what why don't you like it here and it's just like I'm dying in this bank I'm just like right. dying and, and that bank has since closed down in Ireland Ulster Bank RIP so um divine timing then, pardon divine timing it was I know this this is only recently this is only recently a closed down so I made the right move so uh so I like I like like I was completely naive. I came to Los Angeles, just like got off a plane, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll be able to get a visa somehow," or blah 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 blah. So you didn't? Did you, did you know anybody? Did you at least have a contact or anything? No, I knew I knew I knew when I say like I knew nobody. Oh my I god! Knew one, I knew like I like I had no had no connections, no family over here, no nothing like. No, nothing. No one was going to give me like a job. But, but like, you, you have to imagine, Jason, that it's just like, like growing up as a kid, all you hear is about the American dream, the American dream, the American dream. You work really hard. And it's just like, do you know what, man? Like, I'm a hard worker and I love this. And like, I burnt the boats. I couldn't go back. So it's just like, I, I had to succeed. Right. So I came here and uh, of course, like, I can't stay. I have no visa. So I'm just like, what am I going to do, man? Like, and again, like, hey, you didn't find your little honey? You know, I was no, so no, I'm still. <laughs> I'm still on the lookout. So um, so I'm just like, all right. So I was just like, okay, I need to get analytical. I need to like, what do I need to do? And I had a few meetings and I met some people and I found myself getting a small bit of traction and not even traction, just like interest. So I was just like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. So I did some research and I found that Canada, because uh, I'm an EU citizen. Okay. Canada, you can do like a, a, a working holiday visa in Canada. It's like a hundred dollars for a visa and I could go work in Vancouver. And I knew in Vancouver you could there's lots of movies being made. So it's just like, okay, I'll do that. So I stayed in America for uh, a couple of weeks. Then I got my visa for Canada. And I'm in Canada. And I, again, like I had 10 years of financial experience and office experience. So I ended up getting a job uh, on a, a Jerry Bruckheimer TV show. Okay. It was called Home. So um, I was just like telling everyone at home back in Ireland. I was just like, I made it. I've, I'm, I'm working at a production office. Like that, that was easy. Like you know, right. literally two weeks into the job, I get fired because I don't have a clue what I'm doing whatsoever. <laughs> so I was telling everybody like, oh, I'm on Jerry Bruckheimer's new TV show. Anyway, so and I was first in the morning. I was first to leave. I was completely dedicated to it. Um, and then I'm packing up the last day, and the location manager comes up to me and he says. Listen, I see you. I see you here every day. Your first day and your last to leave. My wife's Irish. Would you like to come work in the location department? And I didn't have a clue because I, I didn't have a clue about anything about the film industry. I was just like forest gumping my way through, like using charm. Right, right. I found out pretty quickly. So I ended up becoming part of the locations. And in the locations, it got, got this goes into like lots of like union and non-union things. Sure. So. Because I was I wasn't a Canadian resident, a citizen, I couldn't become union, which means I couldn't do anything else except be production assistant. But the good thing about that was everyone there was 
France, England, Australia, New Zealand, Italy, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. They can all relate. Yeah. And we're all like a big gang of like all these like foreigners in this strange city trying to trying to make it in the film industry. So it was that camaraderie. So I made lots of friends there. And then after that, after that, it was a pilot for a TV show and that didn't get aired. And after that, we all kind of helped each other out. So when I'm doing that, so I'm working 15 hours a day, five days a week in horrendous weather. If anyone knows Vancouver, <laughs> the winters are brutal. Yeah. Brutal. They're not snowy. It's not cold. It's just wet. Wet, ah. wet, wet. So in the summer, I go to Los Angeles. And I did this for like three years. Just like coming back, meeting people. And again, like the film industry is all about, as much as it's about talent, it's about networking. It's about, they buy you before they buy your product. Ah. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying you can't be, you, you, you can't you need to be like anyone can do it but I think it's a lot about because you're going to spend six months with this person is he personable yeah. is he friendly can, can i have some fun with him like you know will he take notes how does he act under pressure all that kind of stuff and a lot of a lot of people in the film industry are, are eccentric so you don't want to get stuck with some guy for two years and he's a he's a maniac right well i'm personable so i'm doing that and um Anyway, my, all my visas, I, I, I exhaust all my visas. I'm done. I, I'm cooked. So I got to go back to Ireland. And I'm like going back to Ireland. And I'm just like, oh, damn. Like I, like I have all, I have like, I worked on about 40 TV shows and, and um, films in Vancouver. But again, as a production assistant. So I'm like right. picking up the trash. But you, learn, like, but you learn so much from being a PA. You make oh, the contacts. People get to love you for your personality. Like that's such a, uh, uh, a, a, a good way in of just selling you as a human being. Oh, 110%. And I, like, like, I, I would be on set and I always wanted to be around like Video Village. So then I could, I'd be beside the director when he was like directing. And then I'd look at the sides. The sides are like what the, what you get each day, what we're going to film each day. So I'd see how that shot on the page translated physically. Yeah. Okay. How did he set it up? So I'm like being informed my writing, but also, like, I remember I worked on Planet of the Apes, the, the third one. Mm-hmm. I was in, like, the middle of the forest for, like, eight or nine hours, standing beside a generator in the rain, making yeah. sure no one stole it. And I was just like, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But, I mean, okay, so let, 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 let's just – we let's put a marker there, but let's backtrack just a little bit because there was so much to unpack there. So I almost want to go back to the beginning and say, what was your plan when you were working in finance? You said you created a plan. What was that plan? All right, so I, I'm a big history guy. I mean, in times of war, you have this, it's called total war. So you change your, you change the whole economy of your country to focus on the war effort, you know? So I said to myself, okay, it's total war. Everything I do has to be angled. I, I'm leaving on such and such state. Every single thing I do is angled towards that. And again, how can I do this? I'm in Ireland. How can I, how can I make things easier when I get there? So I'm working on the bank. So I start buying currency cheap. Right, so when the currency would drop for the U.S. dollar, I'd start buying that. When I, I would, <laughs> I would make long distance phone calls, take stationery, like you know everything. Like I changed my mindset to be, like, working at a bank was just facilitating my, 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 my end goal. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a banker. This was this, the bank was my side hustle. <laughs> you know, right, right. So and then I'm okay. So I'm in Ireland. Okay, how can I reach people in America? So like, like, social media was a big help. So I'd add them on. I'd add them on. I, I used to add them on all the all the platforms, but then like I, Twitter is more where people give their opinion. So I I uh, I connect with people on Twitter, producers, directors, blah 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 blah. And then like okay, so how would I angle myself? What makes me different to the guy coming to Los Angeles to follow his career? Right. Okay, I'm Irish, so I'd find I find producers, directors, actors who had Irish last names. That instant connection. Yeah, yeah, so we, yeah, had, yeah. We, we had we had that like again like if, if I seen if I knew that like tennis, uh, I'd be I'm a tennis player too. Right. But, you know you have to find that middle ground. Right. So my my middle ground was oh I'm, I'm Irish. I'll find uh, Michael O'Donnell who who was a producer. Now he might be Irish. He might his grandfather or his great grandfather. But you had that commonality. And uh, I like you know uh, one guy I met. He was drinking a pint of Guinness on his his Twitter profile. And he, he he did lots of movies. He did like lots of Bruce Willis movies. He, he's a writer. So I reached out to him. I was just like, "Oh, you like Guinness? Like I love Guinness. I'm a writer in Ireland." And he's we got into it. And then I said to him, "Well, I'm I'm coming to Ireland. I'd love to share a Guinness with you." And he's like, "Cool, I'm come meet you." And you know that 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 was the I wasn't a stranger to him. We had that commonality. Yeah. 
So I, I start building up like uh You started the plan. You were planning, you were like fishing, you were throwing your net out there to like, okay, who can I like you said earlier, who can I be in contact with? Right? So mm. it, it gets you closer to your goal because hey, I know John, I know Bill, I know Sally. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And it's, again, so I go through like Twitter, I go through LinkedIn, and I try to engage with them and then and go and come to Los Angeles. So Smart. I start doing that and I start like building up like a, like, like a list of people that I could reach out to when I was there, you know? Okay. And then of course, those people would know other people, oh, I can't help you, but maybe such and such could help. Or did you meet, did you ever meet that Irish guy? And like, I, there's, there's lots of Irish communities in Los Angeles. I don't mean lots, there's like three or four. Sure. But, and some people are just like accountants or plumbers, like, you know, and but there's still a few people in the industry. And of course, if they can help me, sure, sure, why not? Like we're all, we got the commonality. We're in, Ireland isn't a big place, you know? Right, right. So, so, okay. So that's, that's kind of like my plan for Los Angeles was get a, get a network, try, try get my script option sold, made, who knows, blah, blah, blah. So that, that was my goal. And then, okay, I can't stay in LA. Where's the next best place to go? Vancouver, North Hollywood. It's like two hours away. They make lots of movies there. Again, Lots of lots of Irish Canadians, you know, big Irish network there. So all this kind of stuff. But at the end, at the end of the three years, I burnt all my visas. I was um, I was done. But when I came back to Ireland, I had this uh, the best CV in the world because I'd worked on all these like massive big shows, like massive big productions. So then I ended up getting them. Um, I ended up getting. I was a personal assistant to his name Scott Bernstein, and we're still. It's like a mentor to me. Um, Oh, let me close this window. It's a bit noisy. Hold on. Yeah, no worries. So I ended up getting a job as the personal assistant to Scott Bernstein. And Scott Bernstein is a former exec with Universal who became a producer himself. He produced Straight Outta Compton. He produced um, the Aretha Franklin movie. but um, And he produced this movie called uh, The Turning with um, Finn Wolfhound and Mackenzie Davis. So, so he's connected. He, he's a good contact. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's he's a great guy, and I still speak to him. I still speak to him today. But again, he he, he was great. He so, but again, like I wasn't. Oh, uh, I wasn't. Um, I I was getting cups of coffee and and like like photocopying scripts from you know. It wasn't like I was. Uh, but again, I learned lots. I have this relationship, and we still have this relationship relationship today. But he was like, you know, if I need you, I'll ask you don't need to like you know just check in with me once twice a day so i'd hang out in his office i'd hang out like do you want a cup of coffee do you want this so um when when i was doing that i'd be like okay where's this war mentality i'm on a war footing so i would send out scripts to producers i'd be like hey do you want to read my script i have the script so i, I and what i learned was i learned to finesse my, my they're called query letters where you query producers yeah so i only query at a certain time in the day like say 7 a.m pacific standard time because that's when you get out of bed and instinctively everybody checks their phone if people like oh i don't check my phone you're lying that's you more strategy phone. that's so smart <laughs> yeah exactly there's no point and here it is don't send the query letter on Monday or Friday. Monday, everyone's catching up from the weekend. Friday, yeah. everyone's leaving the office early. You have to catch them at the... And as well, I say 7.30 and say 12 o'clock. Yeah. Because everyone's looking for the lunch. They're waiting on Uber Eats. Where's my Uber Eats? I got this email. And then I just used to send them an email. I have a script I think you like. Here's the log line. Let me know if you'd like to read the script. So, so, let, it, like. wait, so let me ask you this, just to backtrack a little bit. You said you were on the set originally. Um, you said you were on the set of Planet of the Apes 3. And then you were with the generator. And you're like, okay, this is enough. So, were you no. right? Go ahead. I, I got, I got my visas were done. That was it. I, oh. I just wanted to stay, so I had to leave. Okay, but all this time, with, when you're doing all of these projects and you're PAing, you're doing all this stuff. You're writing at the same time. Oh yeah, when I'm when I'm there uh, on set, like I've I have a scrap of paper and I'm constantly like, I'm, and like the way you're always trying to, you're always trying to. Um, you know, when you're right, you're trying to give an image to the reader's head. How can I finesse this this line? How can I make the, the image clearer? You can't make it so specific that only you can relate to it. Right. What's what's a what what what, what combination of words? It's like a, it's like a, it's like a riddle. It's like a Rubik's cube. How can I convey the image in the least amount of words? Right. And like, so I'd be reading the script, and I'd be like, "That's a cool way. How, how do you describe this this description of this guy getting into a car? That's a really cool way to describe that. That was very visual. Right. So I take that and I reword it, and make it." 
put my own spin on it. So I, I was constantly writing on set, you know? Again, like, no one cares because I have to pick up trash. I have to make sure this is done. Like, no one's... I don't have a... I'm just like a dog's body, you know? Right. Even trash at home. But how... So, I guess, how... How did you get into writing? Like, and then when, how old were you and where were you when you wrote your first piece? Like your first, like thing that um, inspired you to write everything else that you've written for, you know, publication? I think, so I was about 31, 32 when I wrote my first script. And I was honestly just, I was just like, do you know what it was? Writing was just like, for me, was just like, it was like that, itch I had to scratch you know it just wouldn't go away it just would not go away. no matter what it, I did it, it no was talking to your soul yeah it was just like it just wouldn't leave me alone it's just like if I don't do this it's gonna bug me the rest of my life so it's just like okay I'll write and fail and then I'll be happy and what I discovered was I started writing and loved it and I didn't care if anyone read it because I enjoyed the process yeah. and, I, and I really and adjacent through this like the most important thing that I got through this was like before, I think because I was so unhappy is because I didn't really know who I was. Yeah. It was always that. And then like writing defined me, like writing, writing is who I am. And I, I, like, and of course, listen, I, I love, I love my, I love my MacBook Air, like, but give me a pen and a piece of paper. I'll, I'll be just as happy. Right, like right. It doesn't, it, like, is this in, something inside me? Like if someone offered me a million dollars right now to stop writing, I'd be like, no, it's like, it's like, stop using your heart now. Like, yeah. you know, you can't. I, it's it's not it's, I, I can't take it out of me it's part of me you know yeah, yeah I, I, always, I always had the saying that i you know anytime we're able to create whether you're a writer actor director producer and a uh, painter it doesn't matter uh, uh, pottery that by you creating it feeds your soul it allows your soul to eat right mm. and it's only in that creativity that your soul eats because you know when you're working in finance i work in it and you're doing these things right you would like to create all day, but yeah. when you're doing these other things, your soul's just not eating. So when oh. you're able to do that, it's able to get full. Yeah, and uh, do you know what it is? Like, I think, I think when I was younger, you confuse wealth with success with happiness. And I, I think as you get older, you realize those things aren't the same things. Mm -hmm. Like they're not like you, I'm not, like I'm not, when I worked in the bank, I worked in a pretty pretty affluent area in Dublin on Baggage Street, and and uh, these people were like millionaires. And, but they were working 60 hours a week and they looked so sad and they didn't know their kids. Like, you know, and you're just like, but he's so, he's so rich. Right. Like, why isn't he happy? And I was just like that. I, I, and like, you know, he's got all this, and he's got this car and he's got this big house. How, like, why isn't he smiling every day? You know? And, and that's what I think, I think people look at, maybe, now maybe I'm wrong. Like, do you ever know those people that are like, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work a day in my life. Like, why is Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg, they're so rich. Why do they keep on working? But for them, it's it's not about wealth; it's about achieving a goal. Yes, you know, yeah. So when you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I, I love Arnold the way his his mentality works. I want to be the best at bodybuilding. Done it. Okay, I want to be a millionaire. Like he was rich before he became an actor. True yep. I saw the documentary. Yep, yep. Did you know? And then like I want to be the biggest actor in the world. Okay, done it. Politics, done it. It's not about wealth, and like that's what we think. I think. Well, that's what I thought. I thought like, oh, once you become wealthy, you become happy. But the, challenging yourself. That, that gives you fulfillment. They're goal driven. Easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. People are goal orientated. You need yeah. to set. This. I, I do. I do a lot of. Um, I, I, I'm. I'm. I'm 41 uh, in September and. Hey, 41, looking good, huh? Looking young. Yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah so anyone wants to send me a gift, feel free. Yeah. yeah. So um, and I'm like, so I try. I try to keep in shape, but like, what I found was, I go to the gym for two weeks and stop, and then I, I wouldn't do it for like two or three months or whatever, and I get fat again. So what I used to, so what I do now is That's drinking the Guinness, right? Oh, oh stop <laughs> mashed potatoes. So what I did is, so what I do now is I have, I set myself like, uh, I do a half marathon every, every four or six weeks. So now I have to, I have to work out because I have this whole half marathon to do. Uh, like, you know, so I paid for it. Yeah. So I'm, that's my goal. And every time I have a goal, I have a goal, I have a goal. So, um, so let me, so let yeah. me ask, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, what, what was the first project that you wrote that you got paid for that got publication like it it made it right and yeah. talk about that a little bit and then if you don't mind dive into how did you start working for the history channel uh um, okay yeah yeah go ahead so, so this time so so i've been working for this guy scott bernstein and i mean the movie finished right so we've been sending out scripts 
during 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 when I was working because uh, I had all this time and it's like other people just like chilling out, just doing nothing. I'd be like, nah, man, this is I'm on a, I'm on a war footing. Like I have a goal. Like you right. know what I mean? Everything is be focused on this. So anyway, the, the production finished. All the Americans went back home, and this is back in Dublin. So I'm um I'm I'm literally going to collect my my social welfare check because I'm 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 done. Like I've, I'm and now I'm just like, what do I do? I've no more visas for Canada, America. I just finished this movie. Like I'm, I don't know, I don't know what I did. Because again, like I don't come from that family. I don't come from like there was no one to tell me what was going to happen. So I'm walking back home from like the shopping mall, and I get this email from this guy, Philippe Martinez. Never met him before in my life. Shout out to Philippe. Never, never, never spoke to him on the phone. And he's just like, Niall, I read that script you sent me. I really like it. Would yeah. you like to come to to Rome to write a movie with me? And I'm just like. Oh, what? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I, was, I was like, dude, we're good, right? My bag's packed. So, so uh, I next thing I know, I'm in, I'm in Rome. He flew me to Rome. Some guy picks me up with a car. And again, I've never met this guy. I was just like, what is this? Is this like sketchy? Is this? I don't know. And I was just like, Do you know what? Man? So, so let me I'm, ask you this before yeah. we, before I lose this question. Um, when you when you were sending these scripts out, was this through your connection, or was this just you blindly sending those queries out uh, Tuesday through Thursday? 7 p.m. This was this guy responded to you. Yeah. So okay. like again, like the connection. So the way I look at it is like, well, say I say I write a script. I send it to the people I know. I send it to the people I kind of know. I send it to the people I've met once. Like imagine the circles, like the the explosion diameter, like you know. Sure. So so but I like even now it's I, I still send query letters. This was like a blind query, like a, a, a cold a cold call essentially. Yeah. You know. And again, the guy liked my log line. They, like the whole thing, people send query letters and they're like a page long. You want to send a, the query letter would want to be like I can read it in fifteen seconds. Mm, that's, that's, that's 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 powerful, y'all. Fifteen second query letter. <laughs> fifteen seconds. Hi, I'm a screenwriter. I have a script, or you could say like, Hi, I'm a screenwriter. I saw your movie last night. I connected with it on an emotional level. I have a script you might like. Log line. If this has piqued your interest, let me know and I'll send you on the script. Regards, Niall. Boom. That's it. Easy peasy. And again, like you want to pick the people you're sending it to. You don't want to just, you don't, if you write like a horror movie, you don't want to be sending it to a guy who does rom coms or Christmas movies and vice versa. You have right. to be selective. And like some people employ like um, agencies to like carpet bomb, mm -hmm. but you're better, you're almost better like, I, I do some mentorships and I'm, when I tell when I tell the, my mentorees and this like imagine you're a sniper you're gonna target a guy you're gonna add him on LinkedIn you're gonna add him on Twitter you're gonna try to engage with him you're gonna see what commonalities you have and then you pick that guy mm. you don't just like I'm gonna fire I'm gonna drop an uh, I'm gonna carpet bomb like a hundred people today because you're gonna get nowhere right right okay so okay so he lo he loved it you you went out there what happened next so the whole thing is like. When people, so there's two different ways to make money uh, screenwriting. You can, you can do something on spec. So spec is like you're speculating. So you're, I'm going to write this in the hopes that I could sell it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Or um, someone can pay to write a script. So anything I've got made, people have read my work and said, I don't like your I don't. <laughs> the script isn't for me, but I like the way you write. How would you write my story? So or which do one this pays movie? more? The, 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 them hiring you to write or if they buy your script? Which one pays more? It really depends. Like, I, like I'm saying that I've, I've, I've never sold a spec as such. I've got it optioned and so on. And the, the amount for a spec in theory has been, like, you know, uh, better than uh, being paid to, uh, to write someone else's story, you know? But I'd say a spec. But then, like, again, the, the kind of, the, the people I deal with, they're in the, like, 5 to 10 million 15 million range like if you're writing for disney you could be talking about like you know half a million dollars to write a disney movie yeah you know hundreds of thousands that's 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 not me yeah know? yeah so, okay so that ended up being you you wrote for him and that ended up you know going out into the world and being made yeah so i, I spent a couple of weeks in italy so the, the driver like drove me out into like the mountains around rome into this like so it's an old olive olive farm mm -hmm. that's been converted into a hotel so but there's no one there. It was it was like it was like it was like deserted because I don't even realize this. In the summer months in Rome, everyone leaves because it's too hot. So I was literally me and this Philippe were in this like massive complex by ourselves. Wow! <laughs> wow. And, and like there was still a full staff, 
but I was the only guest, really. Like, people would come and go. So but it was I was like the... VIP. You had VIP service. No, no, but no one spoke English. There was no, like, Wi-Fi. I was just like, the Edison, I was drinking, like, two bottles of wine at night because I was just like, I was like, it was all paid for. So I was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was fun, but also I was just like, I love something to talk to as well. And, you know? and what, what was that project and what year was that? So that was, I think it was like, so that was Mr. Mayfair. So th that's available on Amazon Prime at okay. the moment. So it was Mr. Mayfair. There's a, so we wrote three of them. So we, Mr. Mayfair, Song to Die For, and The Spice of Life. So they're kind of like Amla Sante, who people might know from Judge Dredd and an American gangster, and he was in Gotti. Um, Ken Davian, who was Borat's manager, and Stephen Byer, who was, who was, um, he was in Ray Donovan and he was Al Pacino's friend in Scarface. So it was, yeah, it was like, there was a few people in it you'd know. Yeah. Like, was it superstars? No. So um, that was like 2017, maybe? And, or not 18? I can't exactly remember. But then what happened, but then, and then I was, I was gearing up to come to America, get my visa sorted. Oh, so, so eventually I, I got, I got a script option by an American producer and he said he would sponsor me. And what, what, so, is that, what does that mean, script option? So the, the, so imagine like a script option is the, the stage before you sell it. So a okay. script option is, um, it's like a letter of intent. I'm going to pay you X amount of money. You still own the script, but I'm the one that can drive it. You know, you can't offer this to anyone else. Oh, this is, okay. This so it's almost like they're paying for that. That uh, exclusivity. exclusivity, got it, got it. Yeah. But it's not sold yet. It's just it's like not sold. got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So okay. they hold it. So so I, I and again, like like we like we just spoke about earlier on, it's all about like connections and and networking and so on. So I, I built up a pretty good relationship with this producer, and we're, we're still friends today. Yeah. And um and he said, oh, we're gonna need you over here to do this movie. Blah 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 blah. I'll sponsor you. So that was me. And I so sponsoring me would be that's how I get my visa. That was the game changer, right? That was the game changer. This through all these different, and here, here's the thing: the the script that Philippe liked was the same script that got optioned by the American producer. So it was that same script? So that that gave you multiple opportunities. Even that's crazy. So the first one was like, I liked your writing, but not for this particular project. And then that next guy that came along was like, Hey, I love this. I'm gonna option it. I'm gonna you know take care of your visa. From that one, you writing that one story, and that 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 was that was my the second script I ever wrote. Wow, and it, it's still it's still alive today in some form or another. But that uh, that script is, and and I have to a big shout out to my buddy Nick Olinsky who 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 took pity on me initially when I first came. He was one of my first like contacts I met in LA, and he's still my friend today. Like seven or eight years later, yeah. he said to write something small contained. That you can film for less than five million dollars. So that like, sec that second film was small and contained. Yeah, okay. well, like a small and contained, but like it, it was. So it happens on one day. It's a guy who has to uh, do something uh, from one location in one day. So pick, think of Saw. Yeah, yeah. Saw's, did did you know, it ever get made? No, but it's still it's still another option. <laughs> like it's still out there. Oh, so he he could still make it. Yeah, like this we have we we talk about it every every once in a while. Like it's still a going concern, you know. Yeah. Okay. So how did you get to start writing for the history channel and everything that's encompassed with that? Cause I was looking at your IMDb and stuff and I think it was, um, nominated for an Emmy and all this stuff, right? Yeah. So it was on the ballot for, an, so there's like, it's, it, it was on the ballot for an Emmy nomination. So when you get nominated for it, so it was like six, six shows get nominated for an Emmy but before that stage, there's a, there's a ballot process where there's twelve shows. Okay, I, I, so it was it was twelve. It was nominated for a nomination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's still that's still a glorious thing because out of all the shows, it was still one of twelve. Oh yeah. Um, and so, you know so, what else, Jason? They had a they had a a billboard of my so I wrote two episodes of eight, and they had like a billboard of my episode on Sunset, which was just a fucking. Amazing how did that episode. feel? How did that feel? Just walk me through it. You see the billboard. It's your episode you wrote. How does that feel? It felt like I was just like, I just can't believe something like this. Cause I like, and that was, this was all accomplished in about five years from like quitting the bank to a billboard on sunset. That's incredible that you, yeah. you get an applause. That's incredible. That's a win. That is a win. Thank you. Yeah. That's a, that's a win that, you know, from any creative, any writer out there, 
right? Whether they wrote one script or 10 scripts, just to have that moment as a human being, hey, this is on Sunset you know, Boulevard and it, there, there's, I wrote that episode. They're, they're promoting that episode I wrote. That is a win. So- Yeah, oh no, that totally was surreal. And it's just like, the account, like, you know, and listen, it's always nice for other people to like congratulate you and say, well done. But like having the fulfillment of being like, I was in a, such a bad place. I was such a negative dude when I worked in the bank. And from going from that and like, like, and I'm not saying, but not, no one gave me, I don't have, no one gave me anything. <laughs> like, you know, no one, I don't have any uncles or anyone in this. I like, I didn't know anyone in the industry. And it was just true sacrifice. And I, I spoke to my friend earlier on today. And I think the like success is in the direct proportion to sacrifice the more you sacrifice the more successful you'll be i missed out so many birthdays and and weddings and and, and christmases in ireland to, to chase this dream yeah and this and like for me was a very a very special moment that like it and like it was all worth it you know all this stuff came to this was all worth it but like it means nothing to i don't know that doesn't mean nothing to anyone else but like it's it's a big board that people are going to drive by, you know? Yeah. But for me, it was just like a sense of accomplishment. But I was just like, like we talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger, what's your next goal? What's your next goal? Okay, goal accomplished. Like, you know, what's my next goal? What's, right. what's, what's the bigger dream, you know? So how did, how, how did that first, you know, when you first started working for the History Channel, how did that come about? Like, what, like, was it a contact from a, a previous contact? Did you submit for it? How did it come about? And then what was that like? So we go back to the script, the script that Felipe like. The second script. <laughs> second script, right? Second yeah. script, Felipe like. Then like, what went this producer? This producer gave the script to, who is, who is now another mentor of mine. His name's a gentleman called Will Rene. So Will's done like the Halo uh, TV show. He's done, like, uh, guys can check him out. He's a Dutch Dutch director. He did lots of stuff. He, he did the Immortals for Fox. He done um Fistful of Vengeance for Netflix. He's done lots and lots of stuff. So he read the script and he really liked it. And he's just like, Niall, I really like your writing. Like, let's let's work together. And this guy has been around for years and he's he's worked with everybody. People check him out, uh, Real Rene. So um, he said to me, he's just like, hey, Niall, do you want to come work? I'm doing this show for the History Channel. Would you like to write two episodes? And I, I was just like, I'm... I'm honored yeah. and, and as well as that like the the episodes I, I got the gladiator so it's like seeing the roman empire through the prism of the Colosseum. so i got mm. Colosseum is famous for gladiator so i got the gladiator episode and which was number one and then i got the episode about the christians being eaten by lions the bishop of antioch so um yeah okay so i guess I, so you so you have two outside of that big projects you're, you're on a roll right now Right, you're on a roll. Yeah, well, like I'm on a roll, as in, like I, I don't know if people know about like the well, COVID hit the industry hard, and then the writer strike and the actor strike hit it hard. Yeah, but like it's like it's never been easy to make movies. It's not like it's never been easy. It, maybe it's been easier. Yeah, but it's always tough, man. Anything, anything like this when you're dealing with like millions of dollars and you're dealing with like you know lots of personalities and lots of different people. Excuse me, it's always hard. It's Excuse me. It's always been very, very hard. So, so let me ask you this. I know you have, you have, you know, you have two upcoming projects as well, right? Oh, I have like twelve upcoming projects. I have oh, like, wow. a, a, like you know, here, here's the thing. Like, you can never, like, nothing's a sure thing here. Nothing until you, until you, until they say roll yeah. or like what? Like, there's so many things that can happen that can be like you know, funding fell through. I was talking to um a director buddy of mine, and he was just like okay, we're going to make a movie in Bulgaria. Like, we have $5 million. If, if, the, if the, the currencies fluctuate between euro and dollars, that could, that could pull the plug. If the actor, actor can change his mind, the actor can be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, yeah. it, it, anything can happen, you know? Yeah. So, so, I, so I, have, I have, like, you know, you want to have lots of irons in the, in, in the fire. Yeah. So what was, I guess, like, what was the big thing for you that, or, or what's allowed you outside of your work ethic that's allowed you to stay consistent, right? And, and I'm going to say consistent because even if you do, you know, one project a year or anything, that's in, in a Hollywood term, I guess, that's pretty consistent, right? Yeah. I, I, you know what it is? I, I don't write. I, I think I write for myself. I think that keeps that keeps me going, Yeah. you know? And I think it's um, like 
Jason, like I'm, I'm so grateful to be where I am right now, and I'm so thankful that I've been given the opportunity to to come and work in America and to come and work in Los Angeles and to, to be part of this industry. Something I honestly thought I'd never be able to uh, accomplish. Yeah. And, uh, and like li- I, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, I got my my new visa, and I'm I'm so grateful to be to be here right now. And you know, uh, you know, people like I, I hate Sunday evening because I'm worried about Monday. Every day I wake up and I'm so grateful and I'm so hungry, yeah. you know, because I worked in the cubicle for 10 years. Yeah. So like, all right, like, of course, I don't want to live under a bridge, but I get to do what I love every single day. And some days are better than others. But it's just like, it's, it's not a job to me. It's just like, it's like a way of life. If that makes yeah, sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I, you know, uh, so when you, okay, so when you write, I always say this, um, like when I write, I, I commit to one to three pages a day, right? Mm-hmm. And I say, okay, if I can do that, I can either have a script in three months or I can have a script in 30 days, right? Yeah. What's your methodology? Like, what's your process when you write a script? Like, like what do you do? Do you wake up and write? Do you escape to a cabin? What is your process? Um, so I think I like to work out and write, get everything done, like, early in the morning. So I think, like... it. it for this is this is my process like i want to have uh, i won't be finished by 12. yeah because here's the thing if i leave writing till the end of the day I'll, I'll either talk myself out of it i'll be like oh it's too late now don't feel well oh i didn't do this oh my friends are going out for drinks oh, blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll be able to talk myself out of it and also um it's if you, you want to give yourself five hours that's what yeah. i say i say you, you you have your process you say uh three to five pages i'm just like Five hours, because the first hours is a complete waste of time. The first yeah, hours yeah. is like to go here, like exit room. He yawns. It's just like, and then the last hour is this like your brain, because you can only get so much juice from the squeeze. Yeah, you know, like you yeah. can't. People just like oh, when someone says I, I I wrote for twenty hours last night, I'm just like that's that's a terrible script. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. Shocking. So I say that the most important thing is those three hours. So the first hour is like the warm up, and once you can get by the first 20, 30 minutes it starts flowing. It starts all coming out of you. And then like by hour, hour two, you're just like, bam, 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 this is gold. Then by, when you come up to the fifth hour, it's it's like your brain's just like zonked. And I, I use the fifth hour for like grammar check, I uh, spell check, this stuff like that, the kind of easy stuff, the kind of like, you know, and then, uh, then I call it a day. And again, like I say five hours, some days it's three hours, other days it's six hours. Do I write every day? No. Do I like do all this? No. Sometimes I write when I want to write. Sometimes I write when I don't want to write. Sometimes I, I just write a scene from a movie I think is cool. I don't know where it's going to go, you know, because as well as that, you want to be, you don't want to spend six months writing something that you, you can't find a home for. Sure. I, like I, I just, I come up with a few ideas and it's like, that's a really cool idea. I'd love to write that. But then I'm just like, no one's going to buy this. No yeah. one's going to, no one's going to make this, you know? So then I guess what makes a script good to you? Right, like if you're reading someone else's script, what makes that script good to you? And then, on top of that, like, what are some rules that you follow when you write? Um. Okay. So, like, I'd say in the first three pages, you want to have something. And listen, I write I write genre stuff. So I write horror, sci-fi, thrillers, action. Like, if you ask me to write a drama. I probably could write it, but I wouldn't. I like so. The advice I gave is right to the those specific genres. Yeah, I'd say you want you want to capture the person's attention within the first three pages. Like if you can catch it on page one, if you can, if if you get the audience asking, and and not in a confusing way, like oh, what's happening here? Why why is this set up like this? What's this scenario? Because if you get the the audience asking questions, you're engaged with them. It's uh-huh. the same way public speaking. If you're just like. If you got up in front of an audience and you said, to, "Does anyone know what the capital of Mongolia is?" People be like, "Oh, let me think about this." So if you can, if you can get that into the audience that are watching the movie, I want to I want to know why that guy is chained up at the moment. Like, why is he chained up? Why Why does he have a black eye? Yeah. I wonder who gave it to him. Was it the, the 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 housekeeper? Was it the the wife? Was it the ex wife? Like, you know, if you can get people asking questions on page one, probably the the first three pages, you've got them hooked. Then, like, this is like a simple, like, I think most people fall down when it comes to, like, structure. Yeah. You can, if you can tell a concise story, so if you can do, like, a tree, I just work off a tree act structure. Act one, we settle. Okay, we're going to go to Die Hard, right? 
Act one, we meet John McClane, he gets off the, the plane. We find out his wife's Christmas party's happening. They have a, an estranged relationship. Mm -hmm. And he goes there, he's trying to mend things, blah, blah, blah. We get kind of the setup, okay? Right. Around, I, I, so I'd say scripts are like 90 pages. So around page 15, you want to have Hans Gruber show up. Remember, the bad guy gets out of the elevator. He gets out of the elevator about, like, you know, it's a bit longer than 90 pages, but around that mark. So, and then you want to have uh, Act 2, Obstacles. Like, you know, page 45, there should be, like, a revelation. Yeah. And then around page 75, is like, all hope is lost. Like, he has no bullets left. Hans Gruber is getting away. He has his wife. How does he get out of it? You know, you see those movies, there's this like, you know, give me your gun and your badge, you're off the case. And he's like, we're going to go do it ourselves. We don't need anyone's help. You know, yeah. they have my wife, we have to rescue her. If you can hit those beats, if you can see that you understand the story, like this is how it's structured. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then you have like people, th th there's obviously Die Hard is about a terrorist take over a building, but it's actually about John McClane trying to reconnect with his wife. Imagine if you took Holly Gennaro out, you took the wife out of the, the movie. And John McClane's an ex-cop who's a security guard now, going around killing them. It's not the same movie. Yeah, it does. It, it almost lacks the heart. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, what's the heart? There's a great movie I saw, and and and, and this took a while to uh, a while to uh, to, to sink in with me. I was about a guy just going, he's just going around killing people because it's cool. Yeah. That, that, all all movies are dramas, wearing a different jacket. So yeah. if it's a sci-fi movie. It's just like spaceships, but if the drama isn't there, like no one cares about the visuals. You want to care about the characters. Mm. No one cares about the explosions. You want to care about the. You want John McClane to get back with his wife, you know. So if you, there was a movie called um, there was a movie called October Sky. So Jake John Hall, Chris Cooper, they live in like I don't know Pittsburgh, and they're like coal miners or whatever, or wherever it is they coal mine, and. They, they have a strange relationship where uh, Jake Gyllenhaal wants to build rockets, but his dad, Chris Cooper, is like the head mine guy. He's like, you're going to have to work in the mines. And that's where the friction is. Yeah, and That's the dilemma, right? It's like, it's, hey, I want to do this. This is what we do. It's safe. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, you want to build rockets? Sure. We look, look who we are. Look where we're coming from. And, and you think the movie's about Jake Gyllenhaal building rockets. And eventually he builds a rocket. And he's always talking about meeting Warner Ron Brown, who's the guy who, who sent them to the moon. So... This kid, he builds all these rockets against his dad's wishes. They come work in the coal mine, and eventually, and the dad, the dad's the antagonist, but he's not like a bad dad. He's just like a, a stern father. Yeah. So at the end, like the whole town comes out and helps them build a rocket, and they get invited to NASA. And this is this is the one of those moments when you're watching movies and you realize it's like the Matrix. You can see the code. You you understand now. Yeah. Jim Hall comes back, and his dad comes up to him and says to him, "You must be happy now. You've met your hero." And Jake Gyllenhaal says, Werner Von Braun was never my hero, implying that his father was his hero. Like, this movie isn't about a kid building the rockets. It's about a kid and a father trying to find that common ground to connect. And everyone can relate to that. Everyone can be relate to, like, how, like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a young man becoming a man and my father. And where, where do we meet now? When, when do I become my own person? Like, that's when I realized movies aren't about the explosions. They're about the human connections. And you have a look at roles, like, Rose and Titanic, the movie's not about the ship sinking. It's not about Leonardo DiCaprio it, because Leonardo DiCaprio's character doesn't change. It's Rose. When we meet Rose, she's like snooty, rich. She doesn't care. And at the end of it, she shuns away. The, the guy asks her, like, what's your name? And she's like, Rose Dawson. Yeah. And she could have gone back to Cal. You know, it's about Rose finding her independence. So, you know, you kind of blown my mind here. Um, what I find is there's always almost like a dual theme. There's the main story and then there's the real story. The main story, like in Titanic, for example, that's the cover up. The ship, the biggest ship in the world, hit the glacier, everyone's dying. Like that's the cover up, but it's really about Jack and Rose. Yeah. If, if you want, if, the, if Titanic was just literally about the, 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 the uh, we follow the captain or we follow the architect, or if Jack and Rose weren't in it, because yeah. of course they're fictional characters. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be the same movie. Like it's not, it's not the same movie. It's not, it wouldn't be as good. So you would, know? You, would you say that with your writing style that you follow kind of having that main story, but you have this sub real story? Yeah, yeah, 110%. And like you, you think of like, this is, if you ever see like any sort of like sports movie, they're like a, a bunch of kids from the wrong side of the tracks who, who like, you know, they meet an inspirational coach who teaches them to work together. And at the end, they reach the, the finals. You want to see that arc. You want to see like, oh, and, and that's what I find, like, 
when I'm speaking to writers, it's, it's like, oh, so what, what's what's the story about? It's a it's about a mother and a daughter improving their relationship. And I was like, so you want a mother and a daughter who hate each other at the start and love each other at the end. That yes. that's that's an arc. You don't want them yes. to get have a better relationship. You want them to like have a relationship. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So. That's interesting because you you during this conversation, I feel like I just elevated as a writer. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because <laughs> that, yeah, no, that that one thing of the main story, a side story, like it's it's such a simple concept that I have never consciously took advantage of it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I have in one movie, right? And it's my best movie. Mm -hmm. Um and it's the only movie that I've done that where it's like, okay, there's this main story, but the sub story and now hearing it from you. And then the examples that you've given me is like, oh, wow. Oh, oh, yes, yes. That's yeah, yeah. It. Honestly, when, when I watched October Sky, like no one told me, I was just like, this movie isn't about this kid building this rocket. This kid is trying to impress his dad. And his dad, his dad sees, the, the dad thinks he can only be impressed if he's a coal miner, you know? And now the dad's, like, you know, it was such a seminal moment where I was just like, this makes complete sense now. This is the heart and soul of the film. Mm -hmm. It's about a father and a son trying to connect. They don't hate each other. Yeah. He's not, he's not like, you know, he's trying to make, he's trying to make his dad proud, you know? Yeah. So what, I guess, what, what's, the, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned up until this point of 40 glorious years as a, as a screenwriter? Like, what's the biggest lesson that's like really enhanced everything? Um, do you know what it is? Like, uh, and, uh, I'm not Jason. I'm not the I'm not the best writer. I, just, I went to school with like people who could write English and like Irish, Ireland has this rich, rich history of like writers and storytellers. And I'm not the best writer. I'm honestly not, man. I'm I'm, I'm my my grammar suffers and I get frustrated and like I write myself into corners and so on. It's about persistence, honestly. To become a screenwriter, it's about persistence. And like you know. Like, you know, how many people have known someone who's been a great singer or a great athlete and they, they just never tried it? Like, they got a setback and they quit and so on. Yeah. We all know people like that. It's just like, I won't quit. I keep, I, I've sacrificed so much to get here and I'm so determined, I'm so focused that, like, I'll, I'll write, I'll, I'll write till my fingers fall off if it means someone's going to read my script. You know, I'll improve it. I'll stay up late. I'll come in early. Uh, and I think, I think you, and again, like it's not it's not risk, but like people won't sacrifice the, their comfortable life and their this and that to to, to for a gamble. But if you're persistent enough, yeah. there's a great quote from um, Denzel Washington, and he said, "If you hang around the barber shop long enough, you'll probably get your hair cut." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's about so for me, it's realizing that persistence is to keep on going, keep on trucking. It, setbacks. It's all about and people, you know. I had to change my mindset because it was all like, you know, starting off was all rejection. It was all people telling me I couldn't write. It was everybody. Yeah. Everybody said I couldn't write. And again, like my spelling was bad. My grammar was bad because I was lazy. And I said to myself, okay, people are telling me this is what I need to fix. Okay, let's fix it. How am I going to do this? I'm going to go through every single line. I'm going to go through Grammarly. I'm going to ask friends to read it, pick out blah, 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 blah. Um, hold on. What was my point? My, um, the biggest thing that that changed well, everything for you, yeah. But the, the whole thing was like the setbacks. The setbacks aren't they're, they're like I welcome setbacks. I welcome rejection because now I'm closer to a to a yes. Mm -hmm. Like all these people, like look look as preparation with opportunities. Like right. I know I can write now. I just have to wait for the, the opportunity to arrive. You know, mm -hmm. I make the circumstances. I don't wait. You got to be proactive. I don't wait for the circumstances to to uh, like uh, come to my door. Like, you know, I'm knocking on doors. I'm shaking the tree. I'm chasing them down, you know? Yeah, and that's, you're that's, still doing that to this day. Every, people are like, you know, I'm a manager. I've got stuff made. I've, I like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working for one of the big streamers at the moment. I'm doing lots of stuff. I'm still sending out cold emails. I, I'm, st I'm still like, you know, trying to meet people. It doesn't get any easier. I know directors who've directed like big movies. They're still, they're, 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 they're still running to the thrift store because they, they need to get something that, that uh, props couldn't. Yeah. Like, you know? And they, they like, and it don't mean struggle. That's just the way it is. It doesn't like it, for the vast majority of people, it doesn't get any easier. It get... Constant. Yes. Yes. Okay. That, and, and that's a powerful thing for the audience to know and to understand, right? Everyone thinks that, Hey, I'm going to create this film or I'm going to write this big film or whatever. And then things are just going to be given to me. 
but it's actually quite the opposite, right? Like the more you do, the more you have to hustle, the more you have to shake those trees. You have representation. They're, they may be reaching out to a few people over here, but there's this vast amount of people over here that you still need to reach out to and try to get work and do things. You know, totally. Like, you know, and um, it, it's it's the, like, you know, it's down to you. And that, that's what I love about it as well. I When I work in the bank, I blame other people. It's other people's fault. Yeah. It's that guy's fault. It's that guy's fault when I'm sad. Oh, it's this guy's fault. It's her. It's the... And now, like, who do I blame myself? Oh, you blame yourself? You know, you know what to do? Shut up. Let's put the work in. All right, you're not doing enough work. That, that's why things aren't happening. Okay, you need to up your game. You need to get up earlier. You need to go to bed later. Oh, you don't want to go to this event? Are you, so you don't want to succeed? Is that what you... I and mean, you have these internal monologues in my yeah. head. It's like arguing with myself, and it's just like, okay, I'll, I'll go across town to go to this event. And, and that's, that, that's the time I'll meet the producer, or that's the time I'll meet the connection or the network, you know? It's... It's like, you know, you, you, the most important days you should work out are the days you don't want to work out because yeah. they're the biggest gains, you know? So the, the, the two things that I've taken from you that's pretty um, uh, jarring is that you're, you're a doer and then on top of doing it, it's like you're persistent. You're a persistent doer. Would you say that being persistent and being a doer, right, has... Are, are some of the, the key qualities that's that's led you to where the position that you're in today? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like I think, especially in America, they like they want to see initiative. You know, like like, like no, nothing's given to you here. Like why should I give this guy a shot? What's he done? Yeah. Like you know, uh, like why 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 should I, no one gave me a handout? Why am I going to give this guy a handout? Why are you showing me? And it's almost like here here's the biggest thing, right? I think confidence is is a big seller like if like if you go to buy a car and and i think writers i think writers sell themselves short if you go to buy a car and the salesman is, is like yeah no it's an okay car like i'll get you to point a to point b like you know it's got a couple of miles on it like you know a few dings here and there or you go to the next salesman and the salesman's like this is the best car you're ever going to drive this is this is gonna oh my god this is like i know it might look great but oh my god this is absolutely fantastic like which which car are you gonna buy from? The one the confident guy or the, the guy who's just yeah, like yeah, like, the one what? that's like, hey, this is the best car ever. You need fifty miles per gallon, yeah, two thousand yeah, exactly. dollars. Let's go. <laughs> oh no, you you have to read this script. Oh no, listen, you're gonna miss out if you don't read this script. Yeah. And again, like you don't be arrogant, but you want to be like you want to believe in your work. But then, like here's the thing: like guys will give you people will give you a shot in this town. They'll give you a shot, but like on page three, if there's like errors or mistakes. Or it's not like it's not formatted correctly. Uh, what I say to like simple like, things, like simple, like they are there, like things yeah, like oh, that. Yeah, no, and, and even the slug lines, they're like you know, like cut twos, all this kind of stuff. We pan over here. This is this is this is what I say to the the, the, the mentorees that, that I deal with. Don't give people a reason to stop reading. Like they mightn't like the script. I didn't really like the story, but yeah, there was three acts in it. There was there was. There was the plot, like there was there was a character arc, there was no mistakes. Because th that, that's when the people say to you, didn't like your script, but I got an idea. Maybe you can write it for me. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you did. You did all the technicalities right. Yeah. So therefore, they're like, hey, if you can do the technicalities right, I came up with an idea. Come write this. Yeah, exactly. You know? So if you can, like, imagine your script, again, when you're writing on spec. So that's how most people get started off. They write on spec and someone reads it. If you can do it on spec, don't think of it as though like I'm gonna sell this script. Think of it as like this is my portfolio. This is a calling card. This is what I'm capable of. Mm. You know. Mm. Okay. So what would you say then for for screenwriters, for people that that just love writing and they're listening to this, they're working on their first script. Like, what's the biggest advice that you would give them? Like, what would you say to yourself if if you were talking to yourself and you were writing your first script? What would you tell yourself? Okay. So. So your first script is either something super personal or like the first time you got your heart broken or whatever, or it's like a space opera. It's Star Wars by 10. Okay. Everyone, that's everyone's first script. No one's going to be able to relate to the first script and it's going to be too personal to you. Like people breaking up in a cafe shop or like, like your dad dying or something like that. It's not going to be, it's going to be so personal. You won't want to change a detail. This is how it happened. This is how I want to do it. Yeah. The next movie you write is like, it's going to cost $200 million and no one's going to make it because it's going to cost $200 million. What I'd say to people is, 
you know, write that script, get that script out of the way. The script I wrote, my first script, Blood and Snow, it was a World War II epic, cost like $100 million, like, like you know, Saving Private Ryan. Like, yeah. you know, no one's going to make that because who, who am I? I'm, not, I'm nobody. Right. But what I'd say, if someone's going to write, if someone's going to do something, and again, people are just like, oh, I don't really want to write horror or thriller or sci-fi or this. And, and I'm not, again, like, I'm only really speaking from my personal experience. And like, there's, again, there's loads of a million different ways to get into the industry and get stuff made. If you can, dis- if you can show that you can tell, again, like we said, three X character arc, like teams and so on. Yeah. If you can do that, you look at, you look at the most of the people from um, the direct Marvel movies, the, their first movies were very small ones. Like, yeah. you know, they weren't like big, but the vast majority of them were like, you know, like small indie directors almost, you know? Yeah. So if you can display that you can write a movie for less than a million dollars, right, with these character arcs and maybe a good twist and maybe like, and again, like stuff like horror doesn't necessarily need to have a star attached. Horror can be, you know, and if you can do something like that for less than a million dollars, people people will eventually give you an opportunity to do your passion project or your of your baby. Yeah. So think, think of the, the way I look at it. My goals are like, you know, stepping stones. So I did the Mr. Mayfairs, I did the History Channel, and I, I'm going up slowly. Like you know, no one's gonna no one's gonna give you a hundred million dollars to direct a movie or write a movie. They're gonna give you oh, he did like this one for a million. This one was like five, seven, ten. Okay, fifth. Oh, we're getting there. We're, you know, we're getting yeah. there. So if someone if someone wants to do a big action movie, could you do a small action movie first? Oh, I can do it for a million dollars. Listen, everyone out there wants to discover the next Blair Witch or the next Paranormal Activity. Right. Like, they're looking for that one. Like, what they're not looking for is, like, you know, a $50 million movie, yeah. you know? Yeah, something that, like you said earlier, something that could be made, that could, that has the opportunity, especially in today's climate, right? Yeah. That could be that, made fairly cheaply and that they know if I sell it to these foreign territories, I can get my money back and then everything outside of that is, hey, we're in the well, green. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's that's the the second movie I wrote. That's that's what it is. It's kind of like a contained thriller. Mm-hmm. You can listen. You can film it for like a hundred thousand dollars, like. But it has a has a good. I don't want to give too much away, but it has yeah, yeah. has a good hook. It has like oh oh this this is fun. It's different, but it's the same. Yeah. Uh, we we almost had it in um to go back to it. We we all we we started like pre production on it, like early stages of pre production, and we had it doesn't matter now, but we had. There was talks of like Bruce Willis playing the. This is before everyone knew he was sick. Yeah. But we had Bruce Willis playing the bad guy, and then and then COVID hit. Oh my gosh. So okay, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, if you have an opportunity like that where someone like Bruce Willis was attached to it, or or you guys were talking about it, wh- are you still revisiting it to this day? Like, hey, we can still make this. It's contained. Like, we can do this. Yeah. Well, like again, like. And, and the producer who has it, it, it's pretty good. Like, I don't, I, like, they don't consult me for anything, like, you know, because, yeah. like, no, no, saying that they do, but like, they don't, they, they're under no obligation to consult me. They, they've got, they, they control it. It's like, it's like if I lease a car, I'm not saying like, where, where are you driving it to? Yeah. Uh, like, you, you clean yeah. the window? Like, they're just like, listen, well, if something happens, you'll come back to you. But like, like, you know, to do with me really so I, I guess do you at least have the opportunity to when, when they are making a project that you wrote are you at least able to be on set to kind of give you know some some, pe- some people want you on set some people don't want you on set some people like you know it's it's all different like it depends on the relationships do we need to be on set it's an extra mouth to feed it's a hotel yeah. room transport do, do we need nile there do we don't need nile like you know say the the history channel was in morocco i didn't go to the they didn't invite me to Morocco, and I was like, "Yeah, well, like you know, it's not, it's no, no. I, would I like to be there? Sure, but yeah." So, it's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure, talking to you with, with so much information and knowledge. I guess what's the before we go? What's like the biggest realistic uh, knowledge transfer that you could give to someone new that maybe they look into the industry as these lights and this glamour, but what is it really like? Like, like feed that horror picture or that realism of like, this is what the industry actually is. This is what you need to be prepared for. And this is how you navigate those waters. First of all, I'd say it's really good to have like, you need to have a strong mentality. And don't get me wrong, like listen, I've been to some really cool parties and met like celebrities and so on. And, and that's cool. 
but like I, I don't care like you know what I mean I, like I, I don't like you know after a while the glamour kind of goes and it's, it's very mundane and like listen I spend a lot of time by myself writing and answering emails and taking phone calls and chasing people but here's the thing 95% of this like as a writer it's it's a struggle man it's like pushing that rock up a hill it's just honestly man I'm, like I'm not, I'm not trying to say I've been to some dark places but I've been to some places I'm just like I'm down man I'm down on my luck like you know nothing, nothing's panning out nothing, nothing's happened and then and then 95% of it is is tortured but that 5% that 5% man makes up for everything it makes up for absolute. It's all worth it when you when you when you get when I got the call about the history channel. It's just like I'm fucking I'm there. When Mr. Mayfair was on, I watched Mr. Mayfair recently on Amazon. It's like yeah, my fucking names on Amazon. Like you know that oh, I got a billboard. But like for all those accomplishments, there's been a lot of like low points and a lot of like wait, like, like I, I've got like no family here. I got friends of course, but like there's been a lot of points where I'm just like fuck, man. I'd love to have a, a point with my dad or I'd love to see my niece and nephew. I'd love to hang out with them, like you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm here. So a lot, but the five percent makes up for everything. So so the five percent overrides the ninety five percent. Yeah, one hundred and ten. Uh, like you know, uh, the five percent is worth ninety nine percent. You know, it's it, it's all worth it in the end. But you you need you need to be willing to to sacrifice. If you're if you're just like oh uh, like you know I want results after a year or two or I want this. It's not going to happen, man. It's, it's just like not going to happen. It's all about relationships. It's all about trust. It's all about like, you know, building a reputation for yourself. It's all about like, you know, networking. It's all about like your personality. It's like as much as it's about your writing, it's about a million other things as well. Yeah, yeah. But what, what I would like to leave people with, Jason, is that like, listen, I did this from Ireland when I was 31, 32 with zero connections. Like people are just like, uh, I can't do, I can't do this or I can't do that. Do it, man it's doable 110 percent. it's doable no that's 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 yeah that's awesome because i mean when you think about it too like a lot of times people think about the shelf life like oh i gotta do that when i'm 19 or 20 and then kind of work my way right but you started at 30 uh and then now you're 40 right or you know 10 years within that 10 years i'm assuming that in the beginning it was like some rough patches or whatever and then you kind of had your hook your win and then for the last you know, five, six years, you've been able to collect more wins along the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, de definitely. First of all, it's, it's just like, it's zero wins for the first couple of years. But now I'm not, I'm not like, you know, after 10 years, I like to think about like, you know, 30% wins, 70% yeah. losses, like, you know, and eventually that's just going to go up. That's, that's, that's just going up and up and up every, because I'm persistent and, and because I'm very personable. Uh, I, I, you know, I can tell a joke, yeah. you know, I have a good, you know, that kind of stuff. So, before I leave you, one one last yes. question: What yeah. what project that you have on the horizon that's coming that you are the most excited? Even even if it's optioned or anything that you're just the most excited for the audience to see on the screen. Um. Uh. The, well, there's two projects at the moment that I'm working on. Uh, one of them's for one of the big streamers, and it's a lot of fun. And I'm really I'm working with like a great team, of guys, and um. I'm I'm really excited to see that on on the screen and that's uh yeah but there, there's another one uh that that was my passion project when I, I I I like when I had to go back to Ireland during covid and I was just like I'm just going to write something I'm in love with I'm going I'm not going to write for anyone else except me the world's ending I want to write and I wrote this passion project that a lot of people who influenced me like you know Scorsese the Palmer for Coppola, like Cameron Carpenter, fucking Spielberg, I like threw it all at the wall. And I wrote this, my best script. And like, so it's in like, we're in early, uh, yeah, it's going, it's going like really, really well. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, um, no, hold on. It's going, it's going to get made. It's going to get made. We're putting the juju out there. It's getting made. <laughs> um, when it happens, Jason, what I'll do is I'll email and let you know what it is. Yeah, you let me know. And where yeah. and, and where can people find you now? Where can people follow you? Uh, what's your Instagram handles? All that good stuff. Uh, that way, people can and watch your work and follow you uh, in your career as you move. Uh, I'm on like on my my Instagram and Facebook are kind of private because uh, I I just like, like share pictures of fucking dogs and old movies. But I, I'm on I'm on I'm on X or Twitter or whatever. And if anyone if anyone wants to reach out to me, just give me a, drop me a message on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn uh, or or Twitter. That's okay. pretty, pretty awesome. Legit. 
Now you're the man. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. It's been a pleasure, brother. This is episode one. So you will forever be in the podcast heaven. <laughs> awesome, Jason. Thank you very much for having me, dude. All right, always, man. Thank you so much now. See you later, brother. Bye-bye.